We're continuing the build of the Mini Avanti from Sebart USA and Gator RC. Welcome everybody back to Just Plain Crazy. I'm Brennan. Thanks for joining me again for another episode down in the lair. And we're continuing the build on the Mini Avanti from Gator RC and Sebart USA. My first turbine, let's pick up where we left off from the last episode. If you haven't seen that one yet, check that link. All right, guys, the turbine is mounted, the thrust tube is mounted. Now it's time to work my way forward through the fuel system and the rest of the gear to get this thing set up and ready for the field. Now, we talked about earlier at the very beginning, the fuel tank that comes with the turbine kit in this. This thing, based on my calculations and the fuel flow ratings for this, we're gonna eat up this uh, 500 milliliter tank fairly quickly. I'm gonna say three minutes, all right? I want more flying time than we're gonna get out of an EDF. So I, I contacted Carlos over at cmjets.com. Now they're out of Spain, but he makes a Kevlar tank and UAT for lots of aircraft, including the Mini Avanti. So this thing actually fits and is designed to sit in the inside, into the belly of this thing, really close to that CG. Um, this thing is going to give me, by my calculations, seven to eight minutes of runtime, which is great. We are gonna carry a little bit more fuel on board, but the nice part is, is that Kevlar, eh, maybe that gives us a little bit more protection. We'll see. But really well-made tanks. Check them out over at www.cmjets.com. I got myself a nice UAT from him and a fuel tank. So if you're worried about weight, I try, I'm trying to be very weight conscientious in this plane. I don't want to overdo it, but if I'm going to use it, I want to use it in fuel. So not in a bunch of senseless other things put into the plane. So let's talk about weights. Um, we're going to go ahead and measure this out on the handy dandy scale. So the Kevlar tank, 175 grams. The tank, uh, the regular, just regular style fuel tanks that, you know, and everybody uses these. Nothing wrong with these. These are fine. For that size, 115. So if we got a little bit bigger of a tank to put in there, which I would probably recommend closer to that one liter mark, obviously that's going to increase. So our Kevlar is heavier. We are going to carry more fuel, but I'd rather do it there than anywhere else. So his UAT comes in at 64 grams. The other UAT that I had picked up, not kind of knowing exactly what was going to go in here and knowing sizes, again, all from a beginner perspective, right? I went with 125 millimeter UAT. Now, this thing I would probably recommend down at either 100 or if you can find one smaller, going even smaller than that yet. But 125 is on the big side, but this thing was heavy also. That's coming in at 101 grams, as I said, comparison to 65. So um, a really nice UAT, very light. Um, as far as the fuel tank and this thing go, they have mounts, 3D printed mounts. This tank actually has, if you guys can see it, this will notch right into the floor. And then I have screws to hold this thing down. Obviously we got a lot of G-forces in this plane. You wanna make sure that your tank is well mounted. Those are really nice strong mounts. Same way with the UAT, has a feature to slide in to the screws and then tighten that down into place. Now, Carlos can make this with whatever fittings you want on there, whether it's Festo fittings, barb fittings, whatever. Um, we're gonna wind up running six mil on the backside, everything just because that's the size of the nipples across the board. We're gonna wind up using one reducer to get me down to four right before we go into the fuel pump, and then everything after that will be four as well. We've reached out a lot of different people, a lot of different forums, things like that. And you want to know what I've really found out? Um, you ask a question to anybody, you're going to get 50% this answer and 50% that answer. So you got to take a little bit from both, make your own decisions and test it out and see if it's going to be, um, you know, what works for you. And that's what I like about this hobby. I do what works for me and I take knowledge from everybody and I try and make sense of it. So what is these things? What do these things look like in the inside? You can unscrew these. There's a nice uh, metal insert in the inside. We have a O-ring on a metal end here or aluminum end. He does a nice job safety wiring. The UAT is a felt filter style UAT. I am still going to run a fuel filter. You don't have to if you have a really good UAT, but um, I'd prefer not to have any junk in the system. 
As far as the fuel tank goes, again, one liter tank with that gets you 1.3 total. Um, same kind of setup, he uses a hardened brass clunk. He actually puts that little piece of fuel tubing in there to prevent it from ever coming forward. That's why they do that. And everything, again, is safety wired. Now, the one thing that I did notice, there's a lot of dust in the inside of the tank and on the tubing and stuff just from the manufacturing process. We're going to go ahead and flush both of these out with uh, some rubbing alcohol. That way we don't leave any remnants behind and make sure that we have no dust and debris in this before we get this stuff hooked up. So with that being said, it's time to drop in some fuel tanks. Let's get to it. All right, guys, now we're going to use some of my buddy Donnie's pieces that he was nice enough to cut me uh, that I know I need for build projects. So he's made me some servo holders and triangles for doing just stuff just like this. So I need to make a spot outside of this wood framing to put my screws into. So thankfully, I have pieces from him. Very helpful. All right, guys, it's time to start um, wiring up and plumbing up our pump. We're going to use four millimeter as instructed in a nice one piece line from the pump. There is an arrow coming in here going out there. Uh, make sure you cut off the end nice and flush. Avoid getting any dirt in there. So you want clean cuts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use some stainless safety wire. And we are going to make our wire twist. And you want to go around twice. Like so. I like doing mine just a little bit further up on the tube. Like that. I use these things. These things are really cool. Gonna pinch them nice and tight and we're gonna lock in those pliers like that. And now we're gonna slide that clamp that we are going to make into place. Try and get our wire a little closer together. And then all we have to do with this thing is just give it a pull and it will start to twist our wire. They don't give you super tons of room here. There we go. And that one's done. Take this. Cut off the excess, leave a little twist there, like so. And we'll just take that and fold that over. Looks good. Let's do the other one.
All right, there you go. Fuel pumps mounted. Now, they, they wanted the nipples up. Well, that's still up. Um, realistically, anything here is going to be gravity fed. So gravity is going to want to take the bubbles out going up to anything. But that's a nice clean mount without adding any extra weight. It's tucked in there. Our fuel lines, uh, our fuel pump controller. And we all we did was open up that area underneath the battery bay. We have our wiring put in for our elevators and the rudder. So basically at this point, now that I know my path from here down, we can go ahead and uh, pop them wings out and we can start working on the connectors that will go from here over to there. Um, besides that, really guys, uh, in order to keep going, the only thing I'm waiting on yet is one reducer. But for today, that's about enough. All right, guys. So um, time to start getting into some fuel line here. I've been playing around with some of this stuff. And <clears throat> this is what we're going to do. I laid out everything right here. Tank from the center port right there is going to go into one of the top of the UAT fittings. The other top of the UAT is fill. Top of the fuel tank is the vent. Out of the center port out of the UAT, the air trap, the filtered side, we're going to go into a filter, a shutoff valve, and the suction side of the pump. Pump is going to be then pressurized straight to the output. The filter I'm putting in here... Um, Mainly just because I don't want to do like they said in the instructions. Um, they said don't put anything here on the output side. So they don't want any other connections in there because it's pressurized. I get that. Talk to a lot of people. And every time you ask questions, it's going to go 50% one way or another. So you got to do what's going to work for you. But what I think is going to work for me is that is straight 4 millimeter. This whole system, if I could do it over, would be straight 4 millimeter. but I already have the tanks. They are all came at 6 mil. So if I had to give you a piece of advice, is think about this. I'll cover this at the end, how I would make each fitting different, and you can order the stuff that way. But when you don't know, you don't know. So anyway, the other thing that I've been kicking around, and thanks to Jan Berg, thanks to my buddy Ronnie London, um, just guys, you, you know, you throw stuff around to. So six millimeter tubing, four millimeter ID, six millimeter OD. This stuff, if you heat it, works really good. Now I've been messing around with it. I heat it. I put it on the fittings. That's great. But there's a lot of tension in this line going anywhere else. Guys will cut. They'll use fittings. Um, I'll show you guys a picture of the tubing cutter you should have right now. I'm using just a razor blade, not dykes, to cut this stuff. Straight cuts are imperative for no leaks if you're using Festo fittings. But anyway, I don't want to use a bunch of 90s. I think I can heat and mold and hold this stuff, so that's what we're going to play around with. So let's get to it. Um, get your layout kind of set in your jet the way you think you want to route things, and um, we're going to heat and play here. So got the old handy-dandy heat gun, so let's do this. All right, that's where that's going, so let's go ahead and scuff that fiberglass up. For the fill line, guys, we're just going to use some regular Tigon tubing so I can put this on there, fold it out of the way, um, and then we're just going to use a standard plug in the end. That'll give me enough hose to fill outside of the jet, and also this will stay nice and flexible. So there's that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, let's get some safety wiring done.
fuel line is done. <clears throat> um, last part of our fuel system is going to be our vent line. So we can do this a couple ways. We can run it straight down and make a coil down at the bottom, or you can loop it around the top of the tank and come back. Um, I, I looked around a good bit to see where I wanted to place this. I'm going to place this up alongside of the nose so it's easy to access. And uh, I got this really cool vent valve. Let me show you guys this thing. So this will mount in the body of the fuselage, and then we will have a vent plug. So this will help to keep the fuel system secured so nothing gets up in there at all but this will remind me to take that off and then i will have take this off here um, we will also have a plug that i can put in for a catch can that i can also just go ahead then and put that fitting in there so that way i can actually trap the fuel as we fill it and know that everything is filled up so anyway, with that being said, um, I kind of planned out my routing here. We're going to loop around the top. We're going to put in some more fuel system holders, and we're going to drop that in there. So uh, let's time lapse through this. Let's get this thing cut in. All right, guys, fuel system is completely done. So we have our vent line run secured, uh, mounted in there and out of the way appropriately. We have our vent mounted now and plugged. So I think uh, at this point, we have our harness to finish from the smooth flight system out to the wing. And then we have to start deciding where we want to put those two bad boys. And um, I would assume now that it's... Uh, this would be a good time to go ahead and start putting in our receivers. I think we're just going to mount these bad boys right up here in the nose. So um, let's take a couple minutes, figure out how we want to route this. We'll be back. All right, guys, our connectors are finished. Um, you can see we have no horns on here yet because we really need to center this stuff up. This is the factory one that will be coming off. So all we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and plug this in here. That'll neutralize all of my controls. I'll grab my transmitter just to make sure that everything is. So there's aileron. And then I have flat function there. So um, I guess we can check retracts too if we wanted. All right, everything's neutralized. Let's go ahead and unplug this stuff and um, let's put in our linkages. All right, guys, so um, the wing spar I've measured out evenly on each side now with a ruler at 121 millimeters. We're going to go ahead and position our wing in place. And once this is all the way in, now we're just going to go ahead and make a drill mark so we know where to um, drill down through this wing tube. Be very careful with the pressure you put on it because you don't want to go down through the wing. And you'll see there, all I did was make a mark for that wing. So now we're going to go ahead and just drill all the way through there. Here you can see the screws, the ones that come with it, Phillips, I don't like those, they'll strip out. I like the hex drive. Just make sure that we get long enough ones. After I drill it, we're going to go ahead and run this down through. Now be very careful here, you take your time because we don't want to split this. And if I have to, we can um, 
just drill this out a little bit bigger. On mine, I have a little bit of a rough edge, so we're just gonna sand that off. And now I just use <coughs> a little rod here just to make sure that I have my spar in straight. All right, now we can go ahead and slide on our other one. Um, our wing is, our wing spar is positioned exactly where it needs to be now. It's held into place, it ain't gonna go anywhere. Now we'll clip this one in. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna mark that, and uh, we're gonna do the same process as over there so we can get these tightened. All right guys, time to make some uh, extension harnesses for the main power system. So we'll kind of measure out here what we need for lead length. I don't know that I have a set distance in mind other than just making sure that I have. We'll make one set. <coughs> and we'll measure it up, make sure we like it, and then we'll do the second set. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut off the ends. Just a little bit of wire exposed there. Take your soldering iron and the flux to clean it. Get a nice tin there on the end. And then we will take our solder, which I don't have. All right, I'm back and I have solder. So um, two things. We have to go ahead and solder this into our XT30s. Make sure you plug those in this way. All right, so you made it a pair. So it transfers heat and it doesn't warp. And then we'll just invert that. So one of the first things we're gonna do is go ahead and add a little heat and we're gonna tin, tin the ends of this connector. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tin the end of our lead. This is how you prevent cold solder joints. So you get solder on each one of these. The other side is our positive. And then we'll just go ahead and get this hot and we'll let that thing suck right inside of there. Nice. Quick and easy guys. If you do it right, it's quick and easy. Let's go ahead and strip back a negative. We don't need much sticking out here on the end. I'm gonna make that wire nice and small. We're gonna tin it, clean off our soldering iron. Hopefully you can see that nice solder on the bottom. Let's get a pick. Nice. All right, we gotta get shrink tube. Be right back. All right, now we're gonna put two small pieces of heat shrink over both of those terminals. So we gave them a nice pull test, made sure that they're nice and strong. We will do each one individually. Look at how nice. All right, let's measure this up and then uh, let's put on our EC3s. All right, guys, we slid on our shrink tube. All right, our small and our large pieces and that's again for tension relief. We have our ends tinned, we have our pins tinned uh, there. So we're just gonna go ahead and get these warmed up and sink them in. Nice. 
Now we'll slide them into the back of the connector. Now I have seen EC3s. Some will go from the back, some you put the wire through, solder, and then pull. So I have seen both, and maybe it's a difference of, you know, good ones versus knockoff ones. I don't know. They all seem to be a slight bit different. So let's go ahead and uh, push these in. All right, guys, best part about this hobby is getting help when you need it. So I ordered that updated linkage. I cut to it earlier, and I showed you guys what's going on. So let me show you guys this. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Look at that surface. That That is a millimeter. What that is coming from, put you down here, is my new arms. This is just one out of the kit. Now, I was always questioning these links that came with the kit. Believe it or not, these are more than adequate. I actually... I actually like them, but when I had to go with a different style arm that was long enough to get out of the fuselage, those holes are slightly larger than the ones that come with that servo, um, which are these things, okay? So what that does though, unfortunately, is create just a little slop. Um, that at 180 miles an hour uh, is probably gonna become a problem. So with that being said, I, I need to fix it. I tried to do a couple things that are like wonky and probably not politically correct, but um, I'm just opting to change the linkage. So all this stuff off to the side and just going with some 256 threaded rod, golden clevis, lock nut, ball link, um, nut, washer, the whole nine yards, no slop, rock solid. It's the way it should be good linkage the other stuff is good if you're going to find smaller arms i just couldn't do it so this is what we're rolling with uh we now got to change our elevators and uh ailerons believe it or not because the flaps are tensioned those are actually fine no issues there it's all this stuff so um let's change the rest on there i ordered 256 full threaded rod from horizon and i got stuff that's partially threaded so with that being said uh, my good old buddy, Donnie, as always, today at the swap meet, bailed me out. So he brought me some 256 threaded rods. You know what that means? We're going to finish up the linkage on this bad boy. Uh, would you believe at a whole swap meet, couldn't find 256 rod anywhere, no golden rod, no nothing. So, uh, But anyway, Donnie got me what I need. We're time lapsing. Let's get through uh, finishing up all of our linkages. So one of the tricks that I use with all thread or threaded rod is I will thread a good end into this piece all the way first. I will measure it out. I will cut it to length. And before you cut it, you can do one of two things. You can either put one of those nuts on there first, cut it, and then back the nut off. That'll clean up the threads. Or I just take mine at a belt sander. I, point, I uh, sand a nice point to it. Then we can go ahead and put on our clevis. Works just fine. All right, guys, let's go ahead and um, let's set up some throws. Take off flaps. Flaps up. Take off flaps. Landing flaps. Take off flaps. Flaps up. Take off flaps. Flaps up. All right, lots of different ways to check throws. We have the standard acumeter here, metric on one side, standard on, on another. Using our Zykoi angle sensors here off of our Zykoi meter there. And then just an old fashioned um, degree gauge. So I picked this thing up a long, long time ago. I'm sure this place or this guy's not even around anymore, but that works really well. Um, so a couple different methods that you can use. They all work just fine. All right, so if you don't have the ability to measure degrees with your throws, here's some information that may help you and we'll see how it fares out in the maiden. Again, uh, 
Nothing here in metric or standard measurements. Everything is in degrees. So they give you your high rates. Aileron's 30, elevator's 35, rudder is 35. So let's start here with aileron. So the high rate is 30%. Every review that I've looked at online, the high rates are way, way too much. So what I did is I looked at what are they calling for for normal flight. 60% of that, which is going to be 18%. So what I did is I set my low rates on 15, and then I set a high rate for um, 23 degrees. So 15 degrees, 23 degrees, we worked around that number, still not near these high rates of 30%. They say for start and landing, that's fine. Snaps and spins, it's the same number. So I don't want to be snapping and spinning while I'm landing, so that's why I stayed away from them. What that works out to be, don't shoot the messenger. If I'm off by a millimeter or a little bit, that's fine. I did this all with rough measurements to give you an idea. That works out on your aileron to be about 12 millimeters and 15 millimeters and half inch and five eighths of an inch. With the elevator, they wanted 35%, which if you break it down to 50 for normal flight, 50% of that number is 17 and a half. So normal flight, I went with um, 18 and 21. So I'm just giving you the numbers that they called for and how I decided to split these. And then, um, that works out to be 17 mil and 20 mil or half inch and three quarters of an inch on low rate and high rate for the rudder. I usually on my models, like lots of rudder. I like lots of authority, especially coming into landing. They want 35 degrees normal flight 80 percent of that which is 28 so uh ultimately what i wound up going with um is is basically 25 millimeters i didn't do a degrees measurement there i went with 25 millimeters and 31 which is about seven eighths and one inch and one eighth inches so just giving you an idea where i'm going to start um i like the elevator authority more so than i like a bullet for a plane i'll actually like my planes to be able to roll a little bit more controlled because i feed in elevator and rudder as needed so i'm going to go with that with a base and i'll tell you uh, during the maiden how my numbers fared out all right, guys, we're getting close to finishing up. Everything's set up, uh, roughly programmed. Throws aren't finalized yet, but I know the layout of the land now and everything works. Um, so one of the issues that I'm running into is when I go and put my batteries in there um, using my Zykoi CG machine, as we added the rest of the stuff, of course, we had nose weight with receivers and everything else, but I thought I'd put my batteries there. That's going to be too nose heavy with the UAT. It's always going to have some fuel in it, so got to start shifting stuff back so i think i'm going to permanently mount the hub the hub is about an ounce um that's not adding much weight but i think i'm just going to go ahead and permanently mount that in the back of the tank the hub for the turbine will permanently get mounted there as well that'll leave me a hook up right up in here and i think what i'm going to use is this carbon fiber plate i'm going to kind of fasten that down into the inside so it's above my ar smooth flight and then we're going to mount all three of our batteries as close as we can to that tank right in that area. So the big things are here, we're gonna have to clean up all this wiring. It looks like crap now that I have everything rough run, I know what needs to go where, and now we can just make sure it's nice and tidy. The other thing that I wanna make you guys aware of, the retracts is only good for six volts. Obviously the batteries we're putting in there are uh, 7.4s. So that's not good for that thing. We got ourselves a 6-volt UBEC. We're going to have to wire that in and mount that up in here somewhere, too. So that way we have that. But otherwise, I'm not going to time-lapse or video this because uh, this is just going to take a while to clean up, cover, look nice. But let's do it. All right, check it out. So here's our battery tray. We're going to epoxy that right in there into the sides. This will give us a nice shelf to get our batteries so they're easily accessible, chargeable. You can unhook them you know, so forth and so on. But that'll let me get those batteries back as far as I possibly can and then be able to firmly attach them. So I like that. Let's get that epoxied in. Let's so check it out. And there's our tray. Um, got all the holes in there to make it nice and light. And it is just slightly angled. So that way as the battery sits there, it doesn't rub on the back of the tank or the tube. That thing is going in nowhere. But as far as the inside goes, we're pretty done. And uh, things are pretty clean in here. I like it for a small plane where it's hard to put things. 
I think this is going to work out pretty well. So I got to mount this and uh, my arming switch. I don't know if I want to put a hole in the outside of the plane or not, or if I want to find somewhere else to mount this on the inside. I'd like to put as little on the outside as possible. So um, I don't know. Let me think about that. All right, our uh, arming or disarming switch needs to go in. So I've been really debating inside or outside of the plane. I think I'm going to go outside just right above that one. That little fitting should be good. We're using one of our diamond carbide cutters. Um, so let's get to it. Little hot glue going to be our friend here. All right, check it out. So you see the turbine? See those two big ass openings right there? Well, I fly off of grass and uh, about any field that I can think of, I'm going to be flying off of grass. So you know what that means? Yeah, lots of FOD going in there. So I want to cut down on as much of that as I possibly can. So here's an alternative method. So a uh, couple ways to go about doing this. Number one, go buy yourself a McDonald's Coke. We love those things, see? McDonald's, I'm loving it. Anyway, there's the bottom. I cut the bottom off of that. I shaped it, we heat it with the heat gun, and then we press it over there just to expand the lips just out a little bit. Now I'm gonna take a drill and I'm gonna drill a couple very small holes in there, so super lightweight. And they'll be like right at the very edge, so that way the epoxy has something to grip to. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy them down there to the bottom. And uh, that will give us some pretty cheap, nice uh, wheel wells. Now, uh, the other thing that you can do with this, if you prefer to go a step further, is you can go ahead and use this now for a plug to make yourself uh, fiberglass or carbon fiber ones. Me personally, I don't want to go through all the work because uh, these will work just fine. No one's going to see in there mm, realistically anyway. So that being said, uh, let's go make the other one. Got to finish this first. All right, guys, let's make the other wheel well. McDonald's cup. We're going to just roughly cut it to a close shape. Now, I know based on the other one, I'm going to use spray can cap to kind of massage that. But I want this thing to go all the way up to the top of my base. So we need to, number one, it's going to get air pressure in there. So we need to just create a small hole. Heat gun. Well, that's cool. And we'll get out our skeezers that we're going to use to cut it. And now I referenced my other one, so I know how high I want to make it. I made some marks on the bench. So I know exactly where I want it to go. Pull this piece out. Hopefully it comes out. And you don't need it perfectly exact at this point. We're just trying to get it pretty close.
Good, I like that. Now we're gonna round out the top part of this to make our dish stick the other way. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sand, take this over to the belt sander, and I'm gonna sand this edge nice and flat. We'll be right back. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to cut our opening for our landing gear. And the last part is we're gonna splay out this end a little bit. So I am going to heat, use some pressure. There you go. I'll go ahead and just test fit it in the plane and we should be good. All right guys, uh, let's do some decals. We're gonna cut these out. We're going to put them in our cockpit. I am not putting pilots in this because we're already nose heavy. Um, we had to deal with that. So anyway, uh, we gotta cut these out by hand. They are not pre-cut. And we'll put them in and then we're gonna glue in our cockpit into our canopy. So let's talk about the turbine setup. Turbine setup is by the instruction, again, read the manual, is 25 millimeters, roughly one inch from the back part of the beginning of that funnel, all right? So go to the end of that funnel before it starts the tube to the end of the tail cone of your turbine. So that's roughly one inch in there. We get the thing mounted up. They recommend the fuel tube goes on the bottom, four mil. One of the things that we talked about at the very beginning is how would I set this thing up if I had to do it all over again? When you go to CM Jets, if you want the Kevlar tanks, very nice tanks, very good fit, lots of fuel capacity, going to be a fantastic runtime. And I love how it sits right, right there about at that, that CG mark, maybe even just a little bit forward. But anyway, um, I would request all four millimeter fittings if you're running the Zykoi 45 in this. The instructions for the Zykoi say four millimeter in, four millimeter out of the pump, and that's fine. So because the fittings I got from CM Jets were all six, at some point I used a reducer in there. So again, I recommended to you guys before during the build, here is that layout. So out of my tank, this is the vent that gets wrapped around and that vent will come out the bottom. You can see right there. All right, so then we have the front of the tank comes into the top of the UAT. So that thing is run over, that runs into the top again. That would have been a four millimeter fitting that I would have had in a 90 degree if I could do it over. Same thing with the fill line out of the top of the UAT. So the other top is the fill. This one, um, I may prefer that to be a six mil for filling purposes, and I would have probably put this one also at a 90. One one way, one the other with this jet, so you can run it right along there. But I probably would have left this one six mil and done maybe a Festo coming this way, or at least a barb fitting. I do like the barb fittings, to be honest, more than the Festo fittings. I just have more faith that they won't leak over time. Um, otherwise, out of the front of the UAT, that thing is going to come over. That should be a four mil. Mine's a six, but it should be a four. Comes over, I hit a reducer, all right? Then it comes into four mil into the filter. You don't have to run a filter if you're running a good air trap in there. 
I like both. Doesn't matter. Fuel valves required by AMA regulations. A lot of people put them after the pump. Zykoi recommended nothing after the pump. Not a crazy high pressure, but I just don't think they want anything to pop apart and have that pump pushing fluid out. So I think that's the logic behind it, which um, does seem to, you know, make sense to me. So with that being said, um, the pump I have mounted down there at the bottom but that covers the fuel system because after the pump that's a four millimeter nipple that runs underneath and feeds into the festo fitting at the bottom of the turbine okay so there's that now electronics this is your hub wire that thing will run over into the hub it only fits one way for the pump i struggled with these pictures up here finding out which one was which when they label like data port and throttle which one goes where so i hope this helps you the pump i left on the bottom one that thing runs over the pump is marked which way that you plug that thing in they recommend the pump to somewhat face up my logic is if it's down there on the bottom no air bubbles can get trapped it's got to come up um, the battery plugs into the battery port only goes in one way comes over we plug into we are running one of these 2200 milliamp um, two cell lipo 7.4 volts it's 120 c so more than enough for a turbine operation now um, data port is the one on the top i actually ran a y harness here because i'm running a jetty telemetry module so this splits off into my um uh, FADAC display so I can look at my display monitor there, but also now I can branch that data port off into my uh, Zykoi telemetry module for Jetty. That thing runs underneath and it goes over to the E1 port. So that's EX bus information coming into there. All right. Um, and the throttle port just runs off of here into the throttle port of your receiver or in this case a smooth flight. So um, with that being said, that's the layout of the land. I hope that helps you guys get your first turbine in the air. All right, so um, the balance has worked out. That's good. So that's been confirmed. Our throws are set. I think now the only thing left is to... Um, this will come out, by the way. The only thing that will hang in there is that cable. But uh, is to go through this thing, check all of our nuts, our bolts, our screws, everything that was in here from our test runs our steering, our retracts, check all of this stuff. Make sure everything is nice and tight and good to go. And um, I guess we're ready for a maiden. So uh, let's get to tightening things. Now we're gonna do two things before we fire this up the first time. Let's just go ahead, and make sure we blow this thing out. All right, now we're also just gonna just pick it up and make sure that we shake it. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. The moment of truth. Uh, fire up time again. I've gone through all the checks. Everything seems good. We got our Halotron fire extinguisher right there. Plane set up outside. We've blown away the debris. We've cleaned out the inside. All of our radio settings check good. So we're ready to go ahead and fire this thing up again by the book. And it's always good. If you're not sure with what you're what you're doing or what's going on or how to route things, do it on a bench. That way you're not going to burn your model down. Uh, otherwise, it's it's kind of alluded to in the book that that's what you should do um, I opted to put mine into the model everybody chooses to do things differently but I'm confident with the setup and what I got going on here um, I've gotten a lot of help from a lot of great people along the way we'll give all of them a shout out here shortly but um, you know with that being said we have all of the necessary precautions also taken care of but let's get this thing fired up and uh, check it out
And there you have it, guys. That's a wrap of my first turbine. This is the Mini Avanti from Gator RC and Sebart USA. I'm Brennan. This is Just Plain Crazy. This is my first turbine. I am so stoked to finally get one, get it made, built, assembled, whatever you want to call it, and get this thing out to the field. Do me a favor. Head on over to www.gator-rc.com. Check yours out below. In this mini size for the Zykoi 45, they got BAE Hawks. They got Avantis in tons of colors. Um, they got a bunch of other planes in there. So if you're into top model RC, you're into Sebart, you're into Seagulls models, they got a ton of different stuff over there check them out links down in the description below so with that being said if you enjoyed it smash that thumbs up it helps us out a lot the shameless plug stuff here comes like share subscribe all that neat stuff do me a favor comment down below um, if you wanted or have just recently got into turbines share your story with me as well I can't wait to see them hear them read them with that being said don't forget to check us out on the official just playing crazy uh, Facebook and Instagram pages Guys, links down in the description below. The next video coming up for this bad boy is going to be the, be the Maiden. I am so stoked. I can't wait. We got to get that turbine waiver signed off. And also, don't forget, we have links all over the place, up there, down below, um, that we're going to be including that will be for other videos as well. So things like how we set up uh, the AR Smooth Flight or how we did the Zykoi, um, things like that. So other videos, other links, how to get in, into your first turbine. That stuff is all coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned to the channel. So I'm Brendan. You're just playing crazy for always hanging out and watching. I appreciate every one of you guys. Happy flights. Peace.